That time of year is almost upon us again. I'm not talking about Christmas. I'm talking about the time of pointless TV purchases and cheap Amazon Echoes for everyone. Black Friday. Well, this is the Black Friday offering from PC specialist, the Fusion. Let's see if it's better value than a TV that you didn't think you needed until you saw it in an email, shall we? Utilising a 90 degree rotated motherboard layout, Alter F2 carries the torch of Silverstone's stack effect, bottom to top directional airflow design legacy. Hi guys, I'm Matt and welcome to Kit Guru and to my review of the Black Friday Deal PC pre-built desktop from PC Specialist, the Fusion. The recommended retail price on this system is £899, including VAT and delivery. Now, I configured this exact spec of PC on the PC Specialist website before the Black Friday offer went live, and it came out at £1,067, including delivery as well. That's a pretty decent saving. And part of the benefit of buying a pre-built is the warranty that you're going to get. This thing's covered by their three-year standard warranty, including coverage of one year for parts, three years for labour, one month collection cost, and then lifetime hardware tech support. That can be upgraded to a higher tier of warranty for an additional cost. The platinum warranty is an extra 165 quid on top of the price, which covers everything that I just mentioned for the full three years. So let's dive in. I wanted to get the price and the, the warranty out of the way first. Let's now dive in and have a look at the spec that you're going to get for your 900 quid. Starting with the CPU, it's the AMD Ryzen 7 5700X, which has got 8 cores and 16 threads, a 3.4 gigahertz base clock, and that boosts up to 4.6 gigahertz. It's on the AM4 socket, which is old tech now, with AM5 taking its place. So the only CPU upgrade path that you're going to have with this machine is taking it up to like a 5950X or maybe a 5800X 3D, which in fairness is still a very, very, very solid CPU for gaming. Moving on to the motherboard then, and it's the Asus Prime B550 Plus DDR4. It's got two M.2 slots for storage. One is occupied in the build as it comes. And then that leaves one spare for storage expansion later down the road if you want to add some extra storage in. The rear I.O. contains plenty of USB connectivity. It's got four USB Type-A 3.2 Gen 2 ports, two USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports, one Type-A and one Type-C, and then two USB Type-A 2.0 ports. There's plenty of slots to plug stuff in on the back if you need to. It's got four DIMM slots, with only two being occupied with the memory that's installed. There's room for memory expansions and additions if you want. It's got a Gen 2 RGB header for customising the build a bit more if you want to. The BIOS, when I checked it, was only one version out of date. That's not the end of the world, to be fair, given how mature the AM4 platform is now. And that latest version, when I checked, the one, one that was missing, was only about three weeks old, so I can forgive that not being installed. And the GPU then is the Sapphire Pulse AMD Radeon RX 7600. It's got a 2,356 megahertz base clock, 2,754 megahertz boost clock, both reported by GPU-Z. It's got eight gigs of GDDR6 VRAM. And this GPU should hopefully give us some decent 1080p gaming performance. We're going to run through some benchmarks later in the video just to test how good and how well it handles that. But Dominic reviewed this card in full a few months ago. If you'd like a more in-depth breakdown of that graphics card, we'll leave a link to Dominic's video in this, this video's description. So just go down there and check it out when you finish watching this one. As for memory, we've got 16 gigs of Corsair Vengeance DDR4 3200 MHz. This is in two 8 gigabyte memory modules, installed correctly, I checked that, and there are the two free DIMM slots that I mentioned earlier for expansion in the future if you wanted. Now, as has been the case in the past few pre-built reviews that I've done, I would like to have seen a little faster memory here, especially considering that this is a Ryzen-based system and Ryzen loves fast memory. For storage, we've got a one terabyte Solidine P41 Plus Gen 4 M.2 NVMe SSD. That's a mouthful. It's got read speeds of 4,112 megabytes per second and write speeds of 2,912 megabytes per second when I tested it with Crystal Dismark. 
It's not the fastest in the world, but it'll be absolutely fine for gaming, especially at this price point. The whole PC is 900 quid. We've got to bear that in mind as we go through. But with newer games regularly being 100 gig plus nowadays, that'll soon fill up. As you can see from the Crystal Disk Mark result that I put on the screen, the drive was 84% full once I'd downloaded and installed everything that I needed for this review. Luckily, as I mentioned earlier, there's a spare M.2 slot for additional storage if you want, and you can also chuck in a SATA drive or two in there if you wanted to, like a caveman, it's kind of not many people use them anymore, it's all M.2, but it's still an option if you want to, and it'll work perfectly fine. The power supply is the Corsair CV550. It's got an 80 plus bronze rating and obviously 550 watts of power output. It's a non-modular system. And while I always prefer a fully modular PSU, as it always makes cable management much, much easier, I can understand why a non-modular unit was used in this build. It helps keep the cost down and keeps the system affordable and more accessible for different people. Not everyone wants to fork over thousands for a PC, especially with Christmas on the horizon and kids wanting first PCs or PC upgrades and all that sort of stuff. The bronze rating on the PSU is a little harder to swallow though. And coupled with the 550 watt output, this PSU, while it will be absolutely fine for the spec in the system as it is now, it will definitely be something that needs to be given a second look if you were to upgrade the graphics card down the line or stuff like that, for example. You're going to want to take a look at the PSU and get something a bit better quality. I'd like to have seen better quality included from the off in this PC. And all of the stuff that I just mentioned then is sitting inside of the case you can see in front of me, which is a PC specialist Spectrum 2 ARGB mid-tower case. It comes with four included 120mm ARGB fans, three front intakes and then one that you can see here set up on the rear for exhaust. There's space for another three fans or a radiator up top if you ever need to expand upon the cooling that's there from the off. It's got a tempered glass side panel which is kind of standard issue nowadays. It is, this is a simple, no-nonsense case. It doesn't feel like the best quality in the world. The steel construction feels kind of flimsy but it gets the job done. A tempered glass panel to show off the four ARGB fans is going to appeal to any RGB lovers out there. And then for cooling, the CPU cooler is a PC Specialist Frost Flow 150. As you can see in front of me, it's got dual 120mm fans installed in a push-pull configuration, pushing and pulling air through the heatsink in the middle. It's got five heat pipes, and from my testing, a bit of a spoiler alert, it does perform quite well. It's a, it's a PC specialist in-house model. The temperature charts are coming up later in the video, but this cooler, coupled with the Ryzen CPU, pair quite well together. Now talking about design and aesthetics before we move on to look at performance. Now, while the Fusion isn't going to win any modding competitions, I like its look. It's a simple looking case with simple RGB fans. The lighting on those four fans can be changed with an LED button found on the top of the case. There's most of the usual RGB modes you'd expect to find on basic RGB parts. The lack of any RGB on the cooler and the memory was noticeable to me at first, but that's just because my system's got it, so I've gotten used to seeing it out of the corner of my eye, which it's no big deal, but you may want to add some more RGB down the line if that's your thing. Cable management is tidy all around the PC, as was the case with the other PC specialist pre-built that I've reviewed, the Ultra 79 XTX. All the cables are tidy, all of them are rooted well, and I've got no issues with the quality of the, the build and the way this thing's been put together. Let's move on from talking about the spec and what this thing looks like then and seeing how it performs. I've made no setting changes at all on the PC. DOCP was enabled out of the box, ensuring that the memory was running at the stated 3200 MHz, as was resizable bar, that was all set up and ready to go. There was one GPU driver update available after I'd set up the PC and installed everything that I needed. That installed through AMD's Adrenaline software with a few clicks and was really simple to do. Let's kick things off with some synthetic benchmarks then and let's start with the processor. In Cinebench Multicore, this computer scored 13,126 points. 
This puts the CPU right about where we'd expect in comparison with some of the CPUs that Leo tested in recent times. It's sitting just under the Ryzen 5 7600X. Moving on to talk about Cinebench single core results then, and it scored 1,523 points. And in, in the single core results, it's a little bit of a different story, with this 5700X coming in just four points behind the 5600X from Leo's test. That's practically the same performance, and we can put that difference down to just margin of error. The 7600X sitting at the top of the chart highlights the generational jump in performance and further highlights the restriction of being on an AM4 platform in 2023. Moving on to talk about the graphics card then, and we're going to look at that in 3D Mark Times by the GPU score specifically. And this computer scored 11,213 points, which is a fairly reasonable result. And it puts the Sapphire RX 7600 found in the Fusion just a shade behind the Founders Edition 3060 Ti tested by Dom, and a fair bit above the Palette RTX 3060. Onto the memory performance. And in Ada 64, we saw memory read speeds of 45,767 megabytes per second, while the write speeds were 25,593 megabytes per second. Obviously, the fact that the system is running DDR4 memory over the newer and much faster DDR5 means that the memory speeds are ways behind any more up-to-date system. The memory in this system will still perform well enough for gaming though, and everyday tasks, and it'll handle everything like that. And for a system that costs £900 all in, this is a pretty fair result, I think. And finally, before we move on to the gaming benchmarks, we're going to look at the scores from PC Mark 10. Overall, this thing scored 7,917. In the Essentials category, we saw a score of 10,999. In Productivity, that dropped a little bit to 9,535. And then for content creation, that jumped back up to 12,869. I just want to stop a minute and say I get the impression that a lot of parents out there might look at a computer like this for kids wanting a gaming PC. And I'm guessing they'll also want to know if this machine will suit doing homework and schoolwork and that sort of stuff. Well, it will be more than capable of handling, handling everyday tasks like that with ease. You've got nothing to worry about. More importantly, though, how does this thing game? I benchmarked 10 titles, all at 1080p and all at absolutely maximum settings, minus any ray tracing or dynamic resolution and that sort of stuff. I went for a mixture of some of the latest releases with a few older but still demanding games. First up is Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 2022. This would have been Modern Warfare 3 but it wasn't quite released in time for me recording this video. But in Modern Warfare 2 we saw an average FPS reading of 115.2 and a 1% low FPS of 61.2. Next up we have the relatively new racing game Forza Motorsport where we saw a performance of an average FPS of 61.1 with a 1% low of 48.2. Third, we have one of the biggest U-turns in gaming history, Cyberpunk 2077, which had an average FPS reading of 75.8 and a 1% low of 60.6. Moving on to one of, if not the newest title on the list, Assassin's Creed Mirage, we saw average FPS of 87.8 and a 1% low of 57. Now it's the second racing game in the lineup, F1 2023 which saw average FPS performance of 56.6 and a 1% low reading of 40.6. The sixth game in the lineup that I tested on the PC Specialist Fusion was Hogwarts Legacy, in which I saw average FPS readings of 73.5 and a 1% low FPS of 47.4. The second FPS title in the list, and a game that's had a recent resurgence in player base, is Battlefield 2042, in which I saw average FPS readings of 101.3 and 1% low FPS measurements of 66.7. Next up is arguably the most demanding title in the list, A Plague Tale Requiem. Average FPS in this title was 59.7, with 1% low FPS coming in at 55.2. The penultimate game on the list is a benchmarking classic, Shadow of the Tomb Raider. I saw average FPS in this title of 122.2, with a 1% low FPS figure of 87.8. And then last but by no means least, one of the most highly regarded RPGs ever made, The Witcher 3, 
in which I saw average FPS readings of 56.2 and 1% low FPS scores of 48. And finally, the 10 game average 1080p performance results from across all of the games that I tested were an average FPS of 80.9 and a 1% low measurement of 57.3 FPS. Now, taking into account the settings used in all of those games were at their highest, with ray tracing and dynamic resolution settings all turned off where applicable, I think these results are very, very respectable. The few titles where the average dipped beneath 60 FPS could easily have their settings turned down a bit to push the frames back up. In multiplayer titles where FPS can really affect how high or low you end up on a scoreboard, turning things down to high or medium will help keep things feeling more smooth and more fluid. And that leads me on nicely to talk about eSports titles. It's always going to be the latest and greatest games that people look for in reviews of gaming computers like this one. But I feel that the Fusion pre-built is aimed just as much at gamers who are going to be looking at playing titles like Fortnite, Overwatch, Counter-Strike 2, Rocket League and so on and so forth. I played all of the titles I just mentioned while reviewing and using this system and it handled them all with ease. I cranked the settings up and still had a smooth and fluid experience. For example, FPS was roughly 100 when testing out Fortnite at epic settings, so you could easily knock that down a notch or two and see the frame rates jump up substantially. And with all that gaming and all that performance, let's finally round out the testing with talking about the thermals, the noise and the power levels. The CPU package power was measured at 30 watts at idle, 65 watts during a 30 minute Cyberpunk 2077 test and during a 30 minute Cinebench test that wattage jumped up to 78. As for CPU temperatures then we saw 31 degrees at idle. This is with a kind of cool 18 degree ambient temperature, 57 degrees in Cyberpunk 2077 and 52 degrees in Cinebench. GPU temperatures during a Cyberpunk 2077 30 minute test were 71 degrees on the GPU, 91 degrees on the hotspot, and then 84 degrees memory temperature. Now as those temperatures go up, naturally so does the noise that a computer puts out. The system noise put out by the Fusion was really impressive, with the cooling hardly changing the levels measured throughout the tests. Fan curves were set to the standard setting in BIOS, which performed really well. At idle, I measured the sound at a distance of about 60 centimeters, so near my keyboard away from the computer. I measured the idle sound at 36 decibels, with that rising to 39 decibels during Cyberpunk 2077, and dropping down by one decibel to 38 during a Cinebench test. And lastly, I measured the total power draw from the wall socket, which at idle was 75 watts, during Cinebench was 147 watts, and during a Cyberpunk 2077 test was 317 watts. In conclusion then, I think this PC is really good value for money. It's got great thermal performance and cooling that easily handles the CPU and GPU pairing. It's got very respectable game performance at 1080p, the lack of any substantial upgrade path lets it down overall a little bit, but you have to balance that against the value on offer. It's 900 quid computer that can game pretty well, so it's not too much of a negative. Memory speed could be better, but it's fine for the price again. The power supply only being bronze rated, while perfectly adequate, would have been nicer to see something of a bit better quality. There's good attention to detail in the build process overall. Nothing was forgotten and every, everything was as it should be. And overall, I think it's quality parts. It's a well-built computer that games quite well for 900 quid. So I can't grumble too much. And that's the end of the video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Please leave me a like down below if you did. And don't forget to subscribe to KitGuru and hit the notification bell to keep up with the latest PC gaming news and reviews. If you want to find links to our merch store, our Patreon page or our Discord server, you'll find all that stuff below the video and in the video's description. Anyway guys, I've been Matt. This has been the Fusion Black Friday PC from PC Specialist. I'll speak to you in the next one. Look after yourselves. See you later.